Okay, so today we are talking about what you should do if you are not finding clothing for resale on, on all these bolo lists. So many of us know there are a ton of bolo lists out there, mentors that will give you bolo lists, but what happens if you live in an area that doesn't have that type of clothing? So I am in central Pennsylvania and the majority of the people here are donating clothing that is not trendy, I'm going to say, not on the bolo list, not in the fashion magazines. Now, when I first moved here, I came from Long Island, New York, and Long Island is definitely influenced by the city, by Manhattan, and lots of trendy clothing there. Not that I was able to find too many pieces in the thrift store, but at least I had a chance. Here in central Pennsylvania, it's been my experience that finding trendy clothing in the thrift stores is really a search, really not that common. Although I have found some clothing, the majority of what I find is country folk clothing, we're gonna call it. So today we're gonna to talk about what I do when I can't find you know, clothing that would be on a bolo list. And a bolo list, I mean like the really cool clothing, even Lululemon, even, you know, Marmot, even quite a few different brands. I guess I named two activewear brands, so I guess I really don't know trendy clothing. You know, we do have some anthropology, we do have different brands that are becoming quite saturated, but today I'm gonna to talk about what my strategy is when I get to thrift stores, what clothing I look for, especially if the thrift stores are deep in the countryside. So recently I traveled up north, probably a good 45 minutes from where I live, and I went to a thrift store that I have been there once or twice before. Now I didn't know the thrift store was closing down, and when I got there it was just awful. There was hardly anything left on the floor, but I still found items to sell. And I'm going to share with you my little tips and tricks for finding clothing in an area that might not have bolo list clothing. So the first thing I want to share is a hint or a tip that I'm sure you might have heard, but I felt it was worth repeating. Around Halloween, many of the thrift stores put out racks that they consider costume racks, you know, items, costumes, different pieces that are good for dressing up during the Halloween season. And while they do put a lot of the mass marketed costumes on those racks, I find they also put vintage pieces and are basic staples that you might need for a costume, whether it be, you know, capes or jackets or different black or black pieces if you want to be a witch or something like that. So around Halloween time, I always hit those racks and I'm always successful. I can't think of one time that I haven't found something on the Halloween rack. So today I'm going to show you a few pieces that I found on the Halloween costume rack and we'll take it from there. Okay. So you can probably tell we're doing clothing today and I'm going to be sharing with you a few places in the thrift store that I find pieces that other people might be missing and that bring a fairly good profit for resale. So the first pair of pants I'm going to show are these pants. I'm going to show you the back. Now these pants are English riding pants and I found these on the Halloween rack. They are put out by the Tailored Sportsman and they're called English Riding Habits, made in USA. I'm going to show you the tag. So that is what the tag looks like. So as you can tell, they're just an equestrian pair of pants, but when I see made in the USA, I feel like I need to take a double look. And sure enough, these pants bring good profit. Now right now, all of the Halloween costume items on those racks with the orange tag are half off. So I paid $2 for these pants, thrilled, and I'm imagining that these are gonna bring 30 or 35. So that is my first item, English riding pants. Another item that I frequently find on the costume racks during the Halloween season are, let's see if I can grab this, overalls. Now these are shorts overalls, but plenty of times I have found overall jeans, whether they be man's or women's. I guess the store employees are thinking you want to dress up like a farmer or, I don't know, a scarecrow, I'm not quite sure. Now these are just Old Navy 
But again, I got them half off, so I got these for, I believe, $1.50, which is great. And I do well with denim overalls, whether they be shorts or pants. The skirts I don't do as well with. All right, so that is the next item that I found on the Halloween racks. The third item is a fleece jacket, and this is country clothing. I'm going to show you the tag. This brand is found in Canada. I believe this jacket, this fleece jacket, is vintage. It has shoulder pads in it, and that is what it looks like. So I'm not sure why they put this on the costume rack. There it is there. You can see it has like Native American feathers, I think that is. So I will call this Aztec Southwestern Native plush jacket, and it is a woman's small. So I paid half price. I'm thinking I probably paid about $3 for it. I think it was originally six. And I was thrilled to find this. This brand is based out of Canada and I always do well. I don't find it a lot, but when I do, I make sure it's in good condition and I grab it. All right, so those are a few of the pieces I found on the costume rack. And next I'm gonna talk about non-branded items or items that you'll never see on a polo list, but I have been very successful with. So I have shared with you guys a couple times when I moved to Pennsylvania, I was seeing a lot of the handmade clothing that the Amish and the Mennonite women make. Those groups of people have a tendency to make all of their own clothing or they buy from other women that are hand making the clothing. So when I came to Pennsylvania and I saw racks and racks of, I'm going to call them apron or cape dresses, I thought, hmm, I wonder if there is a market for this. And sure enough, there is, and I have done very well with, I'm going to call them Amish dresses. Now, sometimes I have found the classic, the black, the old Amish style, and a lot of times I've found all the way from that all the way to very bold modern prints. But it pretty much always has the same pattern or look to the dress. And I'm going to show you one of those dresses and tell you a little bit about how I market it. All right, so the first dress up is a plain brown dress. I'm going to stand way back so you can really see the style of the dress. And this dress has a separate piece that is sewn over the bust from Modesty. You can tell a handmade dress by the seams, by the inner seams. Sometimes, most times I should say, these dresses are made on a machine. Sometimes they are all hand stitched. Those are more rare and bring a higher price if the workmanship is good. But this has a lot of detail into it. You can see the sleeves are gathered and then there is a separate banding insert and it also repeats that on the hem. Now, not all Amish dresses are made that way. This one's a little bit fancier. I would imagine this might be for church or going to meeting or, um, I don't know, maybe an event. The women's work dresses have a tendency to be plainer and of sturdier material, where the fancier dresses, I'll call them, have a finer material. They're more of a polyester. They're not a crepe. I'm gonna say, yeah, just a polyester, I'm gonna call it, but. This is what the banding on the bottom looks like. See this piece here? This is all inset. So the woman had to cut the material here, make this separate insert, stitch that on, and then stitch on the hem part of it, if that all makes sense. These dresses were at the half price sale for the store in Morgantown that's closing down and they're opening up down the street. They're reopening in a bigger store. So the Morgantown, I believe, closes down November 8th, I think it is. And right now everything is half price. So when I first went into the store, I thought, oh, this was a waste of a drive. But I put my big girl pants on and went through everything. And I came away with probably, I'm going to say eight to 10 items. And this dress was one of them. And I believe I paid $2 for the dress. So this is dress number one. In that same style, this is probably the same craftsperson that made this seamstress. This is dress number two. And again, this woman put the insert into it. Really well done. A lot of detail in this dress. So I got that one. 
The next dress, I'm not sure if it was made by the same person, but this is a really nicely made dress. The workmanship on this dress is really well done. You can see the seams are all very even and very straight, and they're all very tight. Um, and this one has shoulder pads, which I've never seen that in an Amish dress. So I'm gonna stand back with this one. So this is a black, um, I, I'm thinking this is a poly blend, and again it has that over bust piece of material, that over cape. Now I don't know if this is called a cape or an apron. I know sometimes the dresses have the full extra piece over the front, and sometimes it's just from the waist up. I think the ones from the waist up are called a cape, so it doesn't necessarily equate to a cape of what we think a cape is but there's also the piece in the back. So it goes over the shoulder, does it? No, it's, it's seamed at the shoulder. So that's what that looks like. And again, I got this at the same store on sale for $2. Okay, the last dress I think I found in the regular Goodwill. Yep, I was there in the morning before I went out to Morgantown. And I have never seen a red dress of this style. So if you guys know what occasion an Amish woman or a Mennonite woman would wear a red dress to, whether it's a wedding or, I don't know, beautifully made, beautiful red. And I'm going to stand back so you can see this one. So again, this one is made with that over piece right like that. Now these dresses all have zippers. I know some of the older communities of Amish women pin their dresses. It's all with straight pins. They don't even put buttons or zippers as far as I know. And I have found some of that. I have found some of the bonnets, um, some of the straw hats, the men wear. I don't find the men's clothing a lot. I think the men wear their clothing until it's really well worn. But the women's dresses I do find quite often. Now when I first moved here, I always tell this story. I went into a thrift store and I quickly did a search not expecting to find Amish or Mennonite made clothing online. I thought, oh, they don't have the internet. I'm such an idiot. Of course they have the internet. They're all running successful businesses. I shouldn't say all. A lot of them run successful businesses. So I was surprised to see how well this type of clothing does online because the market's not saturated. Unless you're living in a community where you can find these readily, you might, you know, it's just a smaller amount that is on eBay or on, you know, any of the platforms. So when I first came, I bought a whole rack of the dresses. I went over to the manager and I said, you want X amount? I think she wanted eight and I either bought them for four or for six. And I probably bought, I'm going to guess 80, 80 dresses. It's been a while and they all sold. So that was a great find. So don't feel discouraged if you don't have items that everybody's putting out on these bolo lists because a lot of the items I sell would never make a bolo list. I don't think there is a Mennonite bolo list, although I guess there could be. All right, so that was another tip of something that's not on a bolo list. And now we're gonna switch gears and just talk about styles I do well with. So it's not necessarily on a costume rack. It's not country clothing. These are just different items that I do well with and that I always pick up when I find if they're clean and in good condition. Guys, I don't pick up things that have a lot of dirt or a lot of wear, at least I don't try to. So. When you guys email me and say, hey, I picked up the such and such and it's filthy, how do you clean it? I don't buy it because even if I had time, I really don't have interest in, you know, soaking tubs and, and all of that. If you guys are into that, absolutely go for it. But just make sure you're getting your profit out of it and you're getting paid for the time and the products and the, you know, just the angst of doing all of that. All right, next item up, caftan. And in my titles, I always spell it both ways, C-A-F-T-A-N and K-A-F-T-A-N because everybody spells it differently. I'm not going to argue over which way is correct. I don't really care. I just put both of those in my listing and I also give measurements because caftans, a lot of them are one size fits most. So I'm going to stand back to show you what type of print I look for. Yep, I, I judge my caftans by print. So I'm going to stand back so you can see the print on this one. So this is like a blue and beige or blue and gold 
beautiful scroll paisley floral. Beautiful condition. They're almost always polyester, 100% polyester and satin. And this one has the size tag cut, but you can tell it says one size fits most. A lot of times these might be vintage, but you really have to judge these by the condition. So print, well, condition first and then the print. And this is Winlar, W-I-N-L-A-R. So that is the tag. And what did I get this for? I bought this for $2.50 because they counted it as a nightgown. All right, the next few items are knitwear. They're sweaters, and I'm gonna talk about why I picked these up. I don't think I've ever seen these on a bolo list, but I went ahead and picked them up, and I'm convinced that they'll do well. The first item up is this gorgeous sweater. I love this, look at that print. Real snowflake print, and this is put out by, I think it's pronounced Neve, N-E-V-E. -E. Happens to have its tag, I'm gonna show you the tag. So I was thrilled to find this new. I believe these are lamb's wool. These are made for outdoor wear. Um, polyester, merino wool, acrylic, and nylon. So it's a blend, but it does have a good amount of wool in it, 40% wool. So just beautiful. Look how pretty this is. I love this. Do we love this? Yes, we do. <laughs> so I said yes to this. I paid $4.50 for it. And Neve, if I'm saying that right, should bring $30 to $35 minimum. Okay, what am I going to talk about next? I'm going to talk about this sweater. This is Orvis. In my opinion, okay, it's just an opinion. What do I know? I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm just making it up. Orvis is a very mature person's brand. So when I visited Vermont every year, there was a lot of Orvis up there and most of the people that I saw shopping in the Orvis stores were people who were over 40. So is over 40 an older person or mature person? Not really, but that was the youngest person I think I ever saw shopping there. Majority of the people were in their 60s. A lot of the men were like fly fishermen, the type that, you know, hung out at the coffee shop. Now I'm just making all of this up. And you know, they just went down every day and had their breakfast and, you know, shot the breeze. Is that what we say? Shoot the breeze? So Orvis is a good quality company. I think Orvis used to be made in the United States. I think it's made in China now. I'm not even sure. I'm going to see, oh, Manchester, Vermont, this one is. Oh, made in China. It was sold in Manchester, Vermont. So it is, um, I'm trying to tell what the date is on this. I cannot tell. But it even has a fly fisherman on the label. But this is a woman's sweater, really pretty. Uh, did I say what it's made out of? 100% well, it's a little itchy. <laughs> My kids always hated that. I had the most itchiest kids for fabric, unless it was like, they were like fabric snobs, I'm gonna say, especially Lisa, sorry, Lee. It was like, it had to be 100% cotton to even think of touching her skin. She can't wear acrylic. God forbid she put on wool, she would be miserable for life. So um, these are 100% wool, very warm. I kind of like this. I'm getting to that age where I'm more about comfort and warmth than I am about what it looks like on me. I've never really cared that much. I try, but, but this is a really nice sweater. So that's why I picked this up. I don't know that Orvis would be on a bolo list, but this is a well-made item and there are Orvis loyal customers. So I said yes to this, paid $4.25. I'm gonna guess that'll bring probably about the $30 mark. This next sweater, I didn't know what I was looking at. Okay, so I'm gonna stand back and show you this sweater and then we'll talk about it. So as you can see, beautiful colors, red, gray, white, like a floral, it has pockets. The pockets are even fleece lined. Is this fleece? Well, it's really like a knitted fleece. Zip up, so you're thinking, I'm thinking, oh, this is a woman's cardigan sweater by Gap, right? It says large, kids, 10, 12. What? This would fit me, almost, if I didn't eat so much. So I don't know that I've ever seen a child, 10, 12, wear this kind of sweater 
but I'm gonna label it like a ski sweater because maybe a young girl would like to wear it with like black leggings and a pair of like Ugg boots, you know, that whole look. And really nice, but again, I mean, look at the quality of that. Again, I don't know that a child size 10, 12 is gonna wanna wear this, but I said yes to it because of the style, the word keywords I can use, and just the quality of the knitting is gorgeous. So I said yes to that. But I don't know that you'd see Gap Kids on a bolo list, probably not. I don't, I don't sell a lot of children's clothing. So I will give measurements for this, and I, I might say also will fit a woman's extra small. I won't put that in the title. You do take a chance suggesting things that the product is not you know, telling. It's not labeled that way, but sometimes I do that, and so far it hasn't, it hasn't come back to, um, to haunt me. <laughs> we'll put it that way. All right, what else, what else? Okay, this is Isaac Mizrahi. Is that how we say that? Mizrahi Live, Target. I do well with these sweaters. This is just a cardigan sweater. You're not gonna find this on a bolo list. I doubt it very much. And it is a size medium, but it's oversized. And it's the color and the print that'll carry this. Now, I won't get a lot for it, but what did I pay for this? I paid $4.25. And I'm guessing I could probably get at least 25 for this. So, um, so that's why I said yes to that. All right, what else? I'm gonna throw in some crazy stuff that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sell because we love doing that. This is a vintage Campus Casuals beaded evening top, a shell, a tank. Look at the sparkle on that. I just love sparkle. You know, you put this on under like a jean jacket. There I go again. I, I wear a jean jacket a lot. Or under a black cardigan. So beautiful. Really, really pretty. And the best part of this is, look at that pom-pom hem. Do we love a good pom-pom? Yes, we do. I love pom-poms. And um, I don't think I own one thing with pom-poms. I own a lot of things with tassels, like sweaters with like a Mexican tassel. I love that. But I don't know that I own pom-poms, but I don't know. If I go out one evening for something fancy, I might, I might steal this and throw this on and then have to wash it again. All right, what else, what else? What else shall we talk about? This brand I never heard of. I did comp it. It doesn't bring a lot. Why did I buy it? I bought this one because the graphic is so big. I know, there's the thinking. So this brand is called Gorilla Wear. And there it is there. I'm gonna take it off the hanger so you guys can see it. I believe that this brand is for bodybuilders. It is for men and maybe women to show off all of their hard work in building their muscles. So I have never heard of it. Not that that means anything because I'm not working out anymore. I used to work out a lot. I worked out for about 10 years consistently and I've lost it all because I don't do a thing. No, I was never you know, a crazy bodybuilder, but I did very much um, work out three days a week and kind of you know, did weights and all of that kind of stuff. But, um, but I never wore Corolla Wear, much that. So this is what it looks like. It's a hoodie, sleeveless hoodie. And that is the front. What did I pay for this? I paid $4.25 for that. And not sure what Gorilla Wear will bring. Again, I don't think it's a high-end brand. Got the fiber flying in front of my face as usual. And I'm thinking I'm probably gonna ask 30 for that. Oh, I missed a piece that was on the Halloween costume wrap. This is a skirt that was sold in QVC. And it is the tag Dialogue sure you know and that tag i doubt you're ever going to find dialogue on a bolo list but i went ahead and picked it up i got this half price because it was on the costume or halloween you know in that section and i guess they put it there because it's a sweater skirt that has fringe on the bottom hope the camera is you know what let me get out of the shot so brand new i think i paid two dollars two or three dollars for it i think two what were skirts in that store? I think they were four seventy-five. <laughs> Somebody quickly do the math. Four seventy-five would be two thirty-seven point five. Is that right? I don't even know. Seventy-five. What's half of seventy-five cents? You put the two quarters in two separate piles, and then you got to split that other quarter into twelve cents, twelve and a half cents. Yeah, 
I think I did that right. So that is what that looks like. Now, do I go around picking up all dialogue clothing? I do not. But when it's a piece that I can get half price, it's new with tags, I'll go ahead and pick it up for $2.37.5. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> you guys are probably all like, you know, just yelling at me what the answer is. It's all good. Okay, what else? The next item that I found, I found this in linens. So this is Lululemon. I can never say the name of this scarf. It's like an infinity scarf. This is it. It is a herringbone pattern. It has snaps down the down both ends, so you can snap it different ways. Let's see if I can find the little Lululemon logo. It does still have its tearaway tag. It's called something like the Vanessa scarf. That's not right. You guys could look it up. You know, I could stop the camera or I could look about what I'm going to talk about before I start making these videos and get a little more educated so I could give you better information. But you guys got to do some of the work, okay? So you could look it up and leave a comment down below of what the name of this scarf is. And I'm just looking at the tag if it says it. I don't see it even on the tag if it says it. And I'm looking for, there it is, the little Lululemon charm. Now you do have to be careful with Lululemon. It is a brand that is copied because they have such a good resale value and you want to look at the the tags that are attached. I thought this had a rip away tag. It does not. It has the regular tag. But you always want to look at the shape of the Lululemon emblem or logo. A lot of times when they are copied, when Lululemon is copied, they don't get the shape of the logo of the little uh, I think it's like a like an alpha maybe. I think Lululemon's logo or emblem trademark is, I'm going to say it's either a Greek letter, and I should know that because I did study Greek a little bit, or it is, it means something. So what would that mean? Infinity or, I forget. We could look that up too. So look all of that up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, this should not be in here. This is not what we're talking about today. I'm going to show it to you anyway, because it's my channel, my reels, and I just feel like grabbing something and talking about it. This is Marmot. Look at that. Do we love Marmot? Yes, we do. So Marmot t-shirts and long sleeve shirts do okay. The pants and the jackets and the winter coats do really well for me. So this is kind of like a scuba knit. The scuba knit is almost a knit that's compared to scuba diving. Um, what are they called? Scuba diving outfits. I don't even know what that's called. And um, body suits, body wear, body glove. <laughs> Marmot. So I picked this up. I paid $4.75 for this. I believe it's a men's or I would keep this. It's a medium. So I think it's a men's. A lot of times if you can't tell men's or women's clothing, in my last video, I showed a sweater. I was pretty sure it was men's anyway, and many of you commented that the men's buttons are on one side, the women's on the other. I have not found that to be true with the clothing that is currently made. I'm gonna say in the last 10 years. I see a lot of clothing that does not follow the men's buttons are on the right. So there's that, um, marmot. And the way I do tell if it's a men's piece of clothing, how deep the pockets are and how long the sleeve is, is always, a very good giveaway for me so I measure the sleeve and I try it on sometimes but you know me I'll, I'll wear anything so that doesn't really mean anything all right I am just full of information today let me see what else as long as we shut the marmot vineyard vines cute won't bring a ton of money but how can you stop picking it up when we were all looking for it vineyard vines is on a bolo list and so is marmot on most bolo lists because they move well so even if you don't get a lot of money it's something that people search for you can go into i'm sure you all know this go into any search in ebay and just search the highest to the lowest and you'll see what sells the quickest what's most desirable I will do one more piece, yeah, one more piece, and then we will end this video so I am not running 45 minutes long, probably already at 45 minutes. Bicud, B-U-Y-K-U-D. 
I have never seen this on a bolo list ever, and I love finding this brand. This is a lagging look. They're usually made out of linen or flax, a lagging look oversized women's clothing. I don't know if Bica does men's. I don't think I've ever seen it. Doesn't mean they don't make it. And this is an extra, extra large. It's either a dress or a tunic top. I'm going to call it a dress. Pockets in the front. And again, I feel this brand has a following, but I've never seen it on a bolo list. All right, so that is my video for today. Clothing that most likely you won't find on a bolo list, but you can look for in thrift stores that might be in a non-trendy area and you have half a chance of making some money with the clothing that the thrift stores around you do have. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button. My channel has been doing very well. My views are good, but my subscribership um, needs to climb a little bit more because someday I'd like to have that YouTube 100,000 button and then I can quit. <laughs> Always had that goal. And after that, I could just retire. Just kidding. And another thing that I forgot to say, <laughs> One more thing, for those of you who are looking at my hair and saying her hair looks different, I did have finally my hair highlighted in low light. I think we got more low lights in it this time. I've got some like purpley red in there and some espresso brown. I think it's gonna lighten up. You guys are so kind. You're like, oh, your hair color looks so good. I have not had my hair highlighted or low lighted or any lighted since I'm gonna say January. So I finally got in to see my hairdresser and she did this. I will leave her link down below. Her name is Danielle. Her schedule is filled, but the salon itself is really great. This is Omni Salon in uh, Landisville, Pennsylvania. So I'm going to leave her information down below in case any of you find yourselves near Lancaster and you want to get some highlights and lowlights. All right, all of that. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.